Hello guys, welcome to episode 15 of Operations and Supply Chain Management videos. Now, this week, uh, today especially, we are talking about the theory of constraints and the waiting line theory and Little's Law. Now, these, are, these can be a little complicated, but they are pretty simple once you get the gist of it. Okay, so let's begin. First, the theory of constraints, just remember that uh, we are referring to the whole supply chain with multiple member organizations as a continuous pipeline. Uh, some companies, some, organiza uh, some organizations, some members of the supply chain may have higher capacity available or th a higher theoretical capacity, but there is always one organization, one member of the supply chain that has the lowest capacity of all of the members thereby restricting the overall output right o or overall throughput by its own capacity so what do we do identify it what does the author say i uh, identify the constraint exploit the constraint subordinate everything to the constraint because if you don't you are um, wasting levels of, of capacity that are not being utilized in other organizations right elevate the constraint to make sure that those uh, missing capacity levels can be utilized in the long run and find the new constraint and repeat the steps so overall continuous improvement all around okay now moving on to the waiting line theory um, guys just who loves waiting in lines I shop for my family uh, more alone than together. Uh, we shop together as a family as well. But waiting in line at Stop and Shop or Walmart is never a fun time, right? Uh, I once attended the uh, World Youth Day of the Catholic Church in Madrid, Spain, and to get my registration card and the welcome package backpack I had to wait about four and a half hours just waiting and waiting and waiting um, and it was not the prettiest of experiences now but we all have to line up sometimes right and businesses organizations have to take into considerations about the various effects lining up can have in their uh, con uh, in their customers. Now, in the so well, uh, in the operations and supply chain management perspective, uh, we look at waiting lines or queues in a uh, pretty analytical way, which is waiting line theory. Okay, so. I wouldn't worry too much about the formula, big uh, chunky formula about the probability of n arrivals, uh, namely figure 6-6. Six, six. Just take a look and understand that this comes from the statistical uh, Poisson distribution. Now service times is what we want to focus on. Uh, I won't go into too much details because the reading is for you and you alone. Um, so happy reading. Um, as we move on, there are different concepts and different combinations of the formula. Let me just tell you right now, out of the four or five uh, formulas um, that comes out of uh, service times and other other assumptions of waiting line theory so there are average utilization of the system which is arrival rate over service rate and from there we also have CS which is average number of customers in the system okay now this should be your focal um, formula if you will this should be your basic formula in understanding uh, different formulas that come before and after that so 
for instance, the average number of customers waiting, which is marked as CW, right? C uh, underscript C subscript W, which goes like, uh, what is that? Lambda to the power of two over mu mu minus lambda, right? So if you look at that and look at uh, the average number of customers in the system formula, it is average number of customers in the system multiplied by the average utilization of the system. That's what average number of customers waiting is. Okay, so it makes sense conceptually as well because you multiply the average utilization of the system, so how much your system is being utilized or how full the system is, uh, you take that and multiply it uh, by the average number of customers in the system, you get the average number of customers waiting. Okay, now moving on further, average time spent waiting marked T subscript W, if you look at that, uh, if you look at that formula, it is nothing more than the formula of the average number of customers in the system divided by mu, which is service rate. Okay, so you take how many customers on average are in your system, divide that conceptually by the service rate, which is how fast you are serving your customers, right? Sorry about the baby crying. Uh, it just so happens, right? So you, you uh, divide your average number of customers in the system by your service rate, you get the average time uh, your customers wait, uh, spend uh, waiting in your system, okay? Now, the next thing, TS, T subscript S, the average time spent in the system, right? Not only waiting, but being serviced as uh, being served or serviced as uh, as well. That is one over mu minus lambda. That is nothing more than the average number of customers in, in the system divided by lambda, which is arrival rate. Okay. So again, work the conceptual uh, division of divide having the average number of customers in the system divided by the arrival rate, right? So that should give you the average time spent in the system. So these formulas, although they look really complicated and hard to understand, now you know a little better, okay? Because I just gave you which formula to focus on, which is the average number of customers in the system, marked C, uh, capital C, subscript S which is, by the way, the arrival rate divided by the service rate minus the arrival rate, okay? So this is the way I want you to understand and conceptualize um, the formulas that are presented in the waiting line theory, okay? Uh, other things, uh, pay attention to the, you know, single channel, single phase, multi-channel, multi-phase. We can easily uh, bring up uh, examples of those combinations, okay? Moving on, Little's Law. Look at the formula, I equals RT. What is I? That is the average number of units in the system or inventory. R, average, num uh, average arrival rate or throughput rate. T, average time a unit spends in the system or throughput time, how long each unit spends in the system. Okay, so it signifies the relationship of those three elements in a stable system. Okay, so you flip it around, you flip the formula around, you can say uh, that T equals I over R, right? So you can play with that a little bit. We will be playing with that a little bit uh, when we meet tomorrow, right? So read the example that is presented there 
that should give you enough under, uh, understanding of the concept of what Little's Law is trying to explain. Okay, so guys, this was relatively short video. Um, well, in terms of video content, um, but these three concepts are really important in supply chain management and operations management. So pay attention, read, and I will see you in the classroom and, of course, in the next video. Bye.